Hello and welcome. So today I'm going to be reading from the book, Psychopath Free, Recovering from Emotionally Abusive Relationships with Narcissists, Sociopaths, and Other Toxic People. So this was a really interesting book. It's about 200 pages, so it's not a very long book, an easy read, and there's lots of inf good information in the book. I've decided to read, <clears throat> excuse me, There, there's a section in the book that has 30 red flags of how to spot these people that have these issues so that you can save yourself um, the problem of dealing with them. So I'm going to start reading there, and the title of this section is Spotting Toxic People. Your strengthened intuition is the greatest defense against a manipulative person. It is a skill that can never be exploited, and once learned, it will serve you a lifetime. 30 Red Flags There are a lot of phenomenal studies on the traits and characteristics of psychopaths. A quick internet search will lead you to them. The red flags in this book are intended to supplement these resources. So, what's different about this list? Well, for one, it's specifically about relationships, but it's also about you. Each point requir requires introspection and self-awareness, because if you want to spot toxic people, you cannot focus entirely on their behavior. That's only half the battle. You must also come to recognize the looming red flags in your own heart. Then you will be ready for anything. Number one, gaslighting and crazy making. They blatantly deny their own manip manipulative behavior and ignore evidence when confronted with it. They become dismissive and critical if you attempt to disprove their fabrications with facts. Instead of them actually addressing their inappropriate behavior, somehow it always becomes your fault for being sensitive and crazy. Toxic people condition you to believe that the problem isn't the abuse itself, but instead your reactions to their abuse. How many of you can think of a time when you were dating someone and they may have um, behaved this way? You may have brought up something to them that they did or said that was inappropriate or that hurt your feelings. And their response was something like, oh, you're hormonal or you're being sensitive or just some way to dismiss what you were saying to them. So number two cannot put themselves in your shoes or anyone else's for that matter. You find yourself desperately trying to explain how they might feel if you were treating them this way and they just stare at you blankly. Number three, the ultimate hypocrite. Do as I say, not as I do. They have extremely high expectations for fidelity, respect, and adoration. After the idealization phase, they will give none of this back to you. They will cheat, lie, criticize, and manipulate. Number four, pathological lying and excuses. There is always an excuse for everything, even things that don't require excusing. They make up lies faster than you can question them. They constantly blame others. It is never their fault. They spend more time rationalizing they be, their behavior than improving it. Even when caught in a lie, they express no remorse or embarrassment. Oftentimes, it almost seems as if they wanted you to catch them. Number five, focuses on your mistakes and ignores their own. If they're two hours late, don't forget that you were once five minutes late to your first date. If you point out their inappropriate behavior, they will always be quick to turn the conversation back on you. You might begin to adopt perfectionist qualities, very aware that any mistake can and will be used against you. Number six, 
you find yourself explaining the basic elements of human respect to a full-grown man or woman. Normal people understand fundamental concepts like honesty and kindness. Psychopaths often appear to be childlike and innocent, but don't let this mask fool you. No adult should need to be told how he or she is making other people feel. Number seven, selfishness and a crippling thirst for attention. They drain the energy from you and consume your entire life. Their demand for adoration is insatiable. You thought you were the only one who could make them happy, but now you feel that anyone with a beating pulse could fit this role. <clears throat> Number eight, accuses you of feeling emotional emotions that they are intentionally provoking. They call you jealous after blatantly flirting with an ex, often done over social networking for the entire world to see. They call you needy after intentionally ignoring you for days on end. They use your manufactured reactions to garner sympathy from other targets, trying to prove how hysterical you've become. This is also, I believe, known as gaslighting. How many of you have dealt with someone who's done that to you before? Hmm. Number nine, you find yourself playing detective. It's never happened in any other relationship but suddenly, you're investigating the person you once trusted unconditionally. If they're active on Facebook, you start scrolling back years on their posts and albums. Same with their ex. You're seeking answers to a feeling you can't quite explain. So I'm going to stop here for a second. This is where intuition comes in and going with your gut. If sometimes you, you may meet a guy and there's just something that's just quite not quite right about him you can just he seems so nice and perfect even maybe but it's just something about him that you just feel it's just like a nagging feeling that something's not quite right which leads you to start playing detective <laughs> and don't get me wrong you definitely should do your due diligence in looking into someone especially if it's someone that you're thinking of getting close to but there's a difference in that and a nagging feeling that the person is not being honest with you. So moving on, 10, you are the only one who sees their true colors. No matter what they do, they always seem to have a fan club cheering for them. The psychopath uses these people for money, resources, and attention. But the fan club won't notice because this person strategically distracts them with shallow praise. Psychopaths are able to maintain superficial friendships far longer than relationships. 11. You fear that any fight could be your last. Normal couples argue to resolve issues, but psychopaths make it clear that negative conversations will jeopardize the relationship, especially ones regarding their own behavior. Any of your attempts to improve communication will typically result in the silent treatment. You apologize and forgive quickly, otherwise you know they'll lose interest in you. 12. Slowly and steadily erodes your boundaries. They criticize you with condescending joking sort of attitude. They smirk when you try to express yourself. Teasing becomes the primary mode of communication in your relationship. They subtly, subtly belittle your intelligence and abilities. If you point this out, they call you sensitive and crazy. 13. They withhold attention and undermine your self-esteem. After once showering you with nonstop attention and admiration, they suddenly seem completely bored by you. They treat you with silence and become very annoyed that you're interested in continuing the passionate relationship that they created. 14. They expect you to read their mind. If they stop communicating with you for several days, it's your fault for not knowing about the plans they never told you about. There will always be an excuse that makes them out to be the victim to go along with this. They make important decisions about the relationship and they inform everyone except you. 15. You feel on edge around this person, but you still want them to like you. 
you find yourself writing off most of their questionable behavior as accidental or insensitive because you're in constant competition with others for their attention and praise. They don't seem to care when they leave, when you leave their side. They can just as easily move on to the next source of energy. 16. An unusual number of crazy people in their past. An ex-partner or friend who did not come crawling back to them will likely be labeled as jealous, bipolar, an alcoholic, or some other nasty smear. Make no mistake, mistake they will speak about you the same way to their next target. 17. Provokes jealousy and rivalries while maintaining their cover of innocence. They once directed all of their attention to you, which makes it especially confusing when they begin to withdraw and focus on other people. They do things that constantly make you doubt your place in their heart. If they're active on social media, they'll bait previously denounced exes with old songs, photos, and inside jokes. They attend to the competition's activity and ignore yours. <clears throat> 18. Idealization, love bombing, and flattery. When you first meet, things move extremely fast. They tell you how much they have in common with you, how perfect you are for them. Like a chameleon, they mirror your hopes, dreams, and insecurities in order to form an immediate bond of trust and excitement. They constantly initiate communication and seem to be fascinated with you on every level. If you have a Facebook page, they might plaster it with songs, compliments, poems, and inside jokes. Just going to pause for a second. This is why it's so important in dating for women to move slowly and not get swept up because love bombing is one of the things that a lot of men who have emotional issues do. Um, I think about it like this. If you're so wonderful and he's in his right state of mind and he's emotionally healthy, he should not be trying to move things too quickly for fear of scaring you off and seeming desperate, even if he really likes you. It's just not normal for anyone that has anything going on for their self to want to jump into a relationship with someone that they barely have gotten the time to know. So that's one of the reasons to move slowly when meeting a new romantic interest, in my opinion anyway. 19. Compares you to everyone else in their life. They compare you to ex-lovers, friends, family members, and your eventual replacement. When idealizing, they make you feel special by telling you how much better you are than these people. When devaluing, they use these comparisons to make you feel jealous and inferior. That's definitely a red flag. Comparisons, especially so early on, is a huge red flag to me because why are they talking about their ex so much or family members, friends, anybody, when they should really just be trying to show some respect and get to know you the same way that you would be trying to get to know them? So moving on, 20, the qualities they once admire, claim to admire about you suddenly become glaring faults. At first, they appeal to your deepest vanities and vulnerabilities, observing and mimicking exactly what they think you want to hear. But after you're hooked, they start to use these things against you. You spend more and more time trying to prove yourself worthy to the very same person who once said you were perfect. Number 21. Cracks in their mask. There are fleeting moments when the charming, cute, innocent persona is replaced by something else entirely. You see a side to them that never came out during the idealization phase. And it's a side that's cold, inconsiderate, and manipulative. You start to notice that their personality just doesn't add up. That the person you fell in love with doesn't actually seem to exist. 22. Easily bored. They are constantly surrounded by other people, stimulated and praised at all times. They can't tolerate being alone for an extended period of time. They become quickly uninterested by anything that doesn't directly impact them in a positive or thrilling way. 
At first, you might think they're exciting and worldly, and you feel inferior for preferring familiarity and consistency. 23. Triangulation. They surround themselves with former lovers, potential mates, and anyone else who provides them with added attention. This includes people that the psychopath may have previously denounced and declared you superior to. This makes you feel confused and creates the perception that the psychopath is in high demand at all times. 24. Covert Abuse From an early age, most of us were taught to identify physical mistreatment and blatant verbal insults. But with psychopaths, the abuse is not so obvious. You likely won't even understand that you were in an abusive relationship until long after it's over. Through personalized idealization and subtle devaluation, a psychopath can effectively erode the identity of any chosen target. From an outsider's perspective, you will appear to have lost it, while the psychopath calmly walks away completely unscathed. 25. Pity Plays and Sympathy Stories Their bad behavior always has sob story roots. They claim to behave this way because of an abusive ex, an abusive parent, or an abusive cat. <laughs> they say that all they've ever wanted is some peace and quiet. They say they hate drama, and yet there's more drama surrounding them than anyone you've ever met. 26. The Mean and Sweet Cycle Sometimes they shower you with attention. Sometimes they ignore you. Sometimes they criticize you. They treat you differently in public than they do behind closed doors. They could never be talking about marriage. They could be talking about marriage one day and breaking up the next. You never know where you stand with them. As my morning coffee friend Rydia wrote, they put forth as little effort as possible and then step it up when you try to disengage. 27. This person becomes your entire life. You're spending more of your own time with them than with their friends. Excuse me. You're spending more of your time with them and their friends and less time with your own support network. They're all you think and talk about anymore. You isolate yourself in order to make sure you're available for them. You cancel plans and eagerly wait by the phone for their next communication. For some reason, the relationship seems to involve a lot of sacrifices on your end, but very few on theirs. I'm going to pause again and just to say that this is why it's so important, ladies, to actually have a life, because when you have a life, you have things that keep you busy, you have hobbies, you're in school, you're into charity work, you're into your spirituality, whatever it is that you're doing outside of your job or, or running your business, people like that are usually not good targets for any kind of emotional abuse because you have something to do. So they can't take up so much space in your mind so quickly. So it's so important to actually have a life because if you have a life, you won't be a good target. 28. Arrogance. Despite the humble, sweet image they presented in the early stages, you start to notice an unmistakable air of super, super, superiority Excuse me, about them. They talk down to you as if you are intellectually deficient and emotionally unstable. They have no shame when it comes to flaunting new targets after the breakup, ensuring that you see how happy they are without you. 29. Backstabbing gossip that changes on a whim. They plant little seeds of poison, whispering about everyone, idealizing them to their face, and then complaining about them behind their backs. You find yourself disliking or resenting people you've never even met. For some reason, you might even feel special for being the one he or she complains to. But once the relationship turns sour, they'll run back to everyone they once insulted to you, lamenting about how crazy you've become. And this is something to be aware of in the workplace. If you have coworkers who do this, that's one thing. But if you have a manager or someone who is your superior, and they're doing this to you, watch out.
because good managers never talk badly to their employees about other employees. If they need to vent they and they are a professional and a good manager, they will vent to another manager who is their peer. And even while venting, they're not going to be tearing the person down behind their back. So if you have a manager that's gossiping to you about other teammates, they're going to be doing the same thing uh, um, to you. They're going to be gossiping about you as soon as you do something that they don't like. So don't think that you are special because that is totally inappropriate behavior. And the last one here is 30, your feelings. Your natural love and compassion has transformed into overwhelming panic and anxiety. You apologize and cry more than you ever have in your life. You barely sleep and you wake up every morning feeling anxious and unhinged. You have no idea what happened to your old, relaxed, fun, easygoing self. After running with a psychopath, you will feel insane, exhausted, drained, shocked, and empty. You tear apart your entire life, spending money, ending friendships, and searching for some sort of reason behind it all. You will find that normal, loving people do not raise any of these flags. After an encounter with a psychopath, most survivors face the struggle of hyper-vigilance. Who can really be trusted? Your gauge will swing back and forth for a while like a volatile pendulum. You will wonder if you've gone absolutely mad. Wanting to believe the best in an old friend or a new date, but feeling sick to your stomach when you actually spend time with them because you're waiting for the manipulative behavior to start. Developing your intuition in a pers- is a personal process, but I would leave you with this. The world is mostly full of good people, but you don't want to miss out on that because you've been hurt. Spend some time getting in touch with your feelings. Keep tweaking until you find a comfortable balance between awareness and trust. Look within and understand why you feel the way you did when you were with your abusive partner and how you felt before you met them. You will discover that many old relationships may need revisiting, and as you begin to abandon toxic patterns, healthier ones will inevitably appear in their place. To quote a longtime member and friend, Phoenix, you will stop asking, do they like me, and start asking, Do I like them? So this is just a a really, really good book. Um, Like I said, it's only about 200 pages, so it's not long at all. And it, he, the, the author even goes into telling you how, um, the personal grooming happens. Lots of detail goes into, um, how to heal. Um, how they destroy your boundaries. Um, I mean, just, it's a really good book. I definitely recommend getting this book. Even if you've never been in an emotional um, abusive relationship, emotionally abusive relationship, it will help you, especially if you're a younger person um, or someone who maybe just comes from a background of being around, surrounded by people who actually love and care about you and you're about to go out into the real world and you you may just be one of them people who think that there's good in everyone. If you're a person who thinks that there's good in everyone, I would say read this book. It'll help you to not be so trusting and so naive. Um, so yeah, it's Psychopath Free and the author is Jackson McKenzie. And it's recovering from emotionally abusive relationships with narcissists, sociopaths, and other toxic people. And there's even a test inside of the book. It says, do you know a psychopath? Take the test inside. So I hope you enjoyed this read and thank you for listening.